Ahead this hour, lots of questions after a shooting at a West San Antonio apartment complex. We'll tell you how the victim is doing this morning. San Antonio-based Rackspace is facing several tech issues. We'll show you what's at risk. The holidays are here, and that means scammers are out to steal your money right now. What experts say you should be on the lookout for when it comes to online shopping. 65 degrees at 6 o'clock this morning. The story again is fog. Mike will let us know where you can expect it and how long it's going to last for. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is December 6th. Sarah in for Steph. And don't forget, if you play Mega, tonight's jackpot is estimated at $354 million. Whew. Cash value, 186.9. That would be a lovely early mm -hmm. Christmas present. Right. And earlier today on my drive-in, Mike, I didn't encounter any of this fog, mm -mm. but this has kind of settled in over the next, the last hour or two. It really has. When I got here about three o'clock this morning, there was some fairly thick fog just right around Port SA, and that was the only spot in the metropolitan area, and now it has started to yeah, kind of spread out a little bit more, and it's not as widespread nor as thick as yesterday, but this picture has definitely changed. We could actually, I keep saying we could see the uh, control tower out there at the airport off in the distance about an hour ago, and and that's not the situation right now. So watch out for some mist and damp roads along with some of this fog. Quarter mile visibility out there at the airport. Two and a half Randolph. Mile and a quarter Castroville. That's dropped down slightly. New Braunfels has actually improved somewhat. And Rock Springs, quarter mile, Eagle Pass, Laredo, and then Corpus Christi. So just a couple of spots where it's a quarter mile or less. No advisories are issued as of right now. But obviously, you may turn the corner and run into some of this fog. It is going to be getting thicker before it thins out. So just kind of watch that. It's going to be going back and forth as far as how thick the fog is this morning. 66 degrees right now. That is the normal high temperature this time of year. And everybody is up close to the normal high. So way above, about 20 degrees above where we should be as far as a low temperature, which should be down in the mid 40s. Mold is on the low side. Update account comes out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And temperatures, and we've been down in the low 60s this morning. We may fluctuate this point a couple of degrees here or there. And then we're going to make it up into the low 70s today at noon. Some sunshine will start to squeeze on through. A lot of clouds, kind of like yesterday, a bit more in the way of some sunshine. That's going to help us to get up to 77. So we will be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above the normal high temperature. Obviously, we're getting that warm start right now. And it's going to get even hotter tomorrow. How about the rest of the week and the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. It fog mist causing problems. We always should expect that, right, Mike? I mean, anytime we do have fog out there, things could happen on the roadway that necessarily aren't good things. But we are taking a look at a spot that we where we did see some fog. It's not as foggy as we saw earlier, but we are getting a clearer picture here on this axis road where we did have a crash reported earlier. Uh, now, it does look like this is on the end of it. We caught the tail end of this crash, which is good, which means that things are clearing up out there. But still, just be in mind, uh, keep this in mind, 410 eastbound at the 35 interchange is where we were seeing those flashing lights. Uh, no slowdowns in that area because it was so early and also because it was on the access road. As always, we hope everyone's doing okay out there, but thankfully there's really no need to rush as you get the morning rolling here at 603. Things are going to pick up a little bit later. That's expected as we get morning, get closer to morning rush minute by minute. But getting you to these travel times, uh, things are still pretty much in the green. Thankfully, 30 minutes, I-10 westbound and still pretty green from Seguin uh, to the downtown area. A little more than half an hour and 87 northbound if you're traveling in from Lavernia and about a 29 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But let's get you back here on a 410 Austin Highway. That crash has now cleared, so a great update. Just make sure to watch out for crews anytime you see those flashing lights. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. It's been a busy night for fire crews around town working three separate fires, and here is a live look at one of them. This is the scene right now on Cardiff near I-10. That is on the east side of town. This particular fire started around 4 a.m. Right now we know this home has been destroyed and crews are looking for a 50-year-old woman. There were some dogs in the backyard who were rescued. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. Happening today, the trial for a man accused of shooting and killing a Bear County Sheriff's Office canine named Chucky during a violent chase in 2019 is set to begin. 42-year-old Matthew Morellis is charged with multiple counts of aggravated assault against a public servant, interfering with a police service animal, felony in possession of a firearm, and evading arrest with a vehicle. This is a story we have been following closely since it happened back in 2019. 
can read more about it online at ksat.com. This morning, we're hoping to learn more about a late night shooting that happened on the west side of town. It happened around 8 o'clock last night at the Vista Max Apartments on Callahan near Calabria. Right now, details are limited, but we know a man was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. No word if any arrests were made in this case. The man's in jail this morning after police say he stole his neighbor's car after smashing him in the head with a rock. This happened back in November on San Antonio's east side. According to an arrest affidavit, 26-year-old Giovanni Gomez de Hoyos hit his neighbor with a rock and then threatened to hurt him again if he didn't drive him around town. The suspect eventually stole the victim's car. He was later arrested and is facing an aggravated assault charge. His bond is set at $65,000. San Antonio teen who was shot in McDonald's parking lot had to go back to the hospital. Eric Anthu's family says he was there for three days over complications to his stomach and digestive tract. Ganthu spent seven weeks in the hospital after he was shot in the stomach, lung, and other parts of his body. He was hurt after former SAPD officer James Brennan confronted Ganthu. SAPD fired Brennan, and, and Brennan is now charged in this case. As for Brennan, his trial date is set for February 24th. He faces three felony charges in this case, two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant and one count of attempted murder. San Antonio-based Rackspace still dealing with major tech issues. The company says its team, teams continue to try to determine the full scope and impact of the issue. It sent out alerts last week about issues with their hosted exchange environment, which deals with emails, but it means some businesses can't access info or important documents they may have exchanged with others. Exchange hosted email, which is who that particular part is having the problem, and it's a global problem, not a local problem. Now, Rackspace says they've been able to help some customers with the issue, but the problem persists for others. Well, many of us are doing our holiday shopping online these days. It's convenient and easy, but doing so makes us more susceptible to online scammers trying to steal our personal information. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has some tips to avoid these scams. Tis the season for scammers to steal your personal information online. This year, scams are at an all-time high, and experts say they're more sophisticated than ever. I think in years past, you had a person sitting in their parents' basement, maybe with a hoodie. Things have changed dramatically. It is an organized crime. Social media is a goldmine for scammers, so beware of ads containing suspicious links. Go to that website of that retailer, that bank, that business that you want to do business with, pick up the phone and call the number on that website. Ensure that it is that website. Check websites for misspellings and poor grammar and look out for fraudsters posing as banks or retailers claiming your order didn't go through. Keep in mind that no financial institution will call and ask you for your credentials. No financial institution or store will ask you for your username, your password. They're not going to ask you to transfer data or transfer money into different accounts. When when possible, pay with a credit card for better fraud protection instead of debit or prepaid cards. And trust your gut. If a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Get ready to pay more for Xbox. Microsoft raising the price of first party games. And starting next month, full price games like Redfall, Starfield, and Forza Motorsport will cost $10 more, rising to $70 a game. Google Photos testing a new feature that lets you quickly find people by their face in your Google Photos library. New search feature combines facial recognition with traditional Google Lens features that identifies things like clothing and plants. All right, it's 609 and 65 degrees. Still to come on GMSA, some Cibolo area mechanics have a new friend after making a likely discovery under the hood of an SUV they were working on. We'll explain. And car rental company Hertz will now pay nearly $200 million in a massive settlement over false allegations of stolen vehicles. We'll tell you more about that. Outside with live cam as we get your Tuesday rolling here on GMSA and the fog has started to roll in at least on some of these camera shots with our live cams and trans guide cameras around the metro area. We'll be right back. Six thirteen. If you haven't heard yet, car rental company Hertz will now pay about one hundred seventy million dollars after falsely claiming 
that some of his customers had stolen their rental vehicles. An allegation that led to a real nightmare for those drivers. ABC Rhiannon Alley has a story. This morning, Hertz is settling hundreds of lawsuits from customers who were falsely accused of stealing vehicles, resulting in some paying customers being arrested at gunpoint. This car is reported stolen from Hertz Rent-A-Car. Did you rent it? Yes! They yelled and screamed, get out of the car, put my hands up. All of them were pointing guns literally to the back of our head. Hertz blamed a recurring computer glitch for sometimes listing vehicles as stolen or incorrectly marking a customer as having not paid. The company also blaming the computer glitch for not properly recording rental extensions. It's something that, that shouldn't have never happened. I had a valid corporate you know, lease agreement, what I thought was. Jonathan Olivares says he was pulled over in Louisiana after Hertz reported his car as stolen. He could not get in touch with his employer who set up the rental. So officers charged him with felony auto theft. I was in a, a cell the size of a bathroom with two other inmates. Kelly Grady of Pennsylvania was arrested one month after she returned to Hertz vehicle because the SUV was reported as stolen. She spent 12 days in jail before clearing things up. It was degrading. Now Hertz has agreed to pay $168 million, settling 364 pending claims from customers with similar stories. The company's new CEO says the cases involved one one hundredth of one percent of Hertz customers, saying while we will not always be perfect, the professionals at Hertz will continue to work every day to provide best in class service to the tens of millions of people we serve each year. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. 615. We're going to check in with Stephen. Look at the roads. <laughs> Things are a little better over here, guys. We did have an issue off of 410 uh, there near 35 of the interchange as you approach the northeast side. But uh, now that's cleared out and we're getting a look around town and traffic is a lot busier this morning. You can see it there, 281, even at Hildebrand, where we do have a stalled vehicle, looks like right there near the grass. So they have the hazard lights on. Make sure to watch. Uh, this is that hour where things take a turn. We have to make sure we drive carefully. Uh, taking you to the map, no issues to report as of this moment. Of course, we did see that stalled vehicle off of 281. But uh, nothing too concerning, just really the amount of traffic that we're seeing right now. So if you do have to get your morning started, I would say this is a perfect opportunity to get the ball rolling. All right, Loop 410 over here on the northeast side. While we were talking about that crash, there's also going to be striping and barrier placement uh, that will take place a little bit later tonight and should wrap on Saturday, December 10th. Begins at 9 in the evening and again should finish a little bit later in the morning around 10 o'clock. Now expect to see some alternating lane closures right there near Austin Highway in the northbound area to the Loop 410 westbound connector ramp. So, all right, let's get you back here on trans guide. Things are moving just fine. there, at 37 at Fair Avenue, but we'll keep a very close eye on things. Again, this is one of those times where the morning really does shift. And there is me at home. Uh, we actually have an upcoming Solutionaries episode that is now on our YouTube page. This is a topic that focuses on something that we all can relate to, lack of sleep. I mean, I know a lot of us here talk about how much caffeine we consume daily. So we took, I took a look and shared my personal journey with uh, wonderful people uh, over at the Esther Vexler Yoga School. And we did some yoga and mindful movement and how that can really help give us the best possible rest, but it was uh, quite an experience and I'm excited to share that with you guys a little bit more coming up today at nine. Nine o'clock, we're gonna debrief yeah. Stephen about yeah. that. And you're, you, uh, you're hopefully a successful journey to find well, more restful sleep. Well, listen, I did try a little bit uh, this week and it does help. Good, So that's good to yeah. hear. Thank All right, you, Stephen. Roll the bus, and as you're hopping on the bus, uh, maybe a light little jacket. You know, it's okay. not cold out there, but it's in that dampish. You know. that, that gets in your bones. It's a little wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and we've got some fog, we've got some mist, and then later on today, it is going to be just mm, downright hot. I guess you could say for this time of year, because temperatures will be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Some sunshine thrown on in there as well. So obviously, a lot of folks are waiting for Santa Claus and uh, Rudolph and oh. Goodness gracious, our good old Wi-Fi here. I had a cutest little picture Aww. for you. Darn it all. Picture it didn't happen, Mike. <laughs> Pardon me? Picture it didn't happen. Okay. It didn't happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, darn it. 
They are very <clears throat> cute. All right, here's what it looks like out there by the uh, by the airport, and we've got some fog that has settled in. Didn't really have much going on earlier this morning, but now visibility is down to just a quarter mile, mile and uh, three quarters out there at Randolph, Castroville, mile and a half. So the thickest spot is right there up by the airport, uh, Rock Springs down around Laredo, as well as uh, Corpus Christi, some thicker fog. So yes, there is a lot of it scattered about, but it's nowhere near as thick as what it was yesterday. Weather Service has indicated it's monitoring the situation and to see whether we need a uh, dense fog advisory. There are no advisories posted as of right now, but just take it easy because obviously with the fog, there is some mist on the roads as well. All right, normal high temperature average is 66. We get close to it as it looks right now by Tuesday with a more potent front moving on through. Not any sort of an Arctic blast right now, but at least it's going to get us down to where we should be. But look at this. Tomorrow we're up to 80 and then we stay in the mid 70s by uh, all the way through the weekend. And then the low temperatures again, the normal average low is 44. So we're going to be anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees above normal for low temperatures. And part of the reason for this is the fact, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have a lot of uh, humidity out there as well. So the cloud cover, the humidity keeps things, keeps you from dropping down all that much in the, uh, the mornings. Got a lot of cold temperatures up to the north and it's pretty much stacked horizontally. Coldest to the north, warmest down to the south. The zonal air pattern, which means we don't see any really good changes around here. All this very, very cold air just kind of stays up there in the northern branch of the jet stream. And we've got this moisture being pumped in here from the uh, Pacific Ocean. And that really doesn't change at all again through the rest of the week and going into the weekend. Now there is another low which is coming in here out of the Gulf of Alaska, and that's going to start to dig down through the Rockies. This one looks like right now that it will pull somewhat of a front through here by Tuesday into Wednesday of next week, which would give us again, like you saw in that one graph, least temperatures closer to where they should be this time of year, but no big blasts anytime soon or even next week of really, really cold air. 71 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 77 with plenty of clouds, some sunshine thrown in. Then again, tomorrow we hit 80. We stay in the mid 70s all the way through the rest of the week into the weekend. Couple of other than Mist drizzle in the morning, some fog the next couple of mornings, uh, Saturday and Monday, especially uh, chance for a couple of showers out there. At least some of the, you know, I get little blades of grass kind of popping up where I didn't have any. Me so that was like, oh, yeah. I have grass. I didn't know. <laughs> My front yard like looks like the fields of Ireland right now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's in really good shape. And then yeah. like all the, the doom out, outside, the mm -hmm. gray weather, it feels lots of like moisture that. and cooler <laughs> temperatures. I mean, it hasn't been anything really substantial enough to get those little sprouts going there. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, nothing really great rain chances. Nothing really too cold. OK, thank you, Mike. 621, 65 degrees after the break. Caught on camera moment of the day. You don't want to miss what was found under the hood of this SUV. Ladies, six minutes, please. <laughs> this is my life. It's not always picture perfect. Plus, I'm dealing with bleeding from uterine fibroids. Enter my Fembry, a once daily pill for women with heavy menstrual bleeding due to uterine fibroids. With my Fembry, heavy bleeding went down by 84%. Serious risks include heart attack, stroke, and blood clots. Don't take my Fembry if you've had any of these or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, are over 35 and smoke, could be pregnant, or have or had osteoporosis, liver disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, certain cancers, or an allergic reaction to it. Don't use longer than two years as bone loss may occur. Pregnancy loss can occur and changes in periods may make it hard to know if you're pregnant. If you think you are, stop taking it right away. Other risks are depression, suicidal thoughts or actions, abnormal liver tests, high blood pressure, and passing of the fibroid. Less bleeding, same life. I'll take it. Ask your doctor about my Fembry. My life, my Fembry. In this morning's GMA first look, the Royal Rift could be widening again. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? Just two days into the premiere of Harry and Meghan's new documentary, the fallout is already here. There was a war against Meghan to suit other people's agendas. It's about hatred. It's about race. It's a dirty game. The six-part series promising to reveal untold secrets of their exit from royal life. 
There's a hierarchy of the family. You know, there's leaking, but there's also planting of stories. No one knows the full truth. We know the full truth. But why is the series already the source of criticism? I realized they're never going to protect you. I was terrified. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Well, if you need a smile this morning, come on over and check out this video. This furry stowaway was found under the hood at an SU at an under an SUV at the Grease Monkey in Cibolo. The cottontail rabbit was found last week during a routine oil change. Turns out it may have been trying to stay warm under the hood. You can watch the full video of that bunny that was found on the hood on ksat.com. Yeah, I want to check that out. It's a little hard to see with the squeeze back there. We do have rabbits on the side though, so that's uh, extra credit, okay? Yeah. 625, 65 degrees. Community in North Texas is still mourning the young victim of a kidnapping that turned deadly and how they're remembering that little girl. That's just ahead. And checking the roads with TransGuide right now. Looks like we had a disabled vehicle in that last shot. Traffic is working uh, just fine at 90 at Nogalitos. We'll be right back. We're so hopeful. We hope that, that he's at least alive. He was on a camping trip at Canyon Lake, but disappeared from the campsite. Now friends and family of Amir Ali, a college student from Houston, are doing everything they can to bring him home. He was one of the officers that was in that hallway. He was one of the officers that elected to walk out. A big topic in the aftermath of the Robb Elementary shooting was law enforcement accountable. Now the uncle of one of the victims wants a school board member to step down. In Colombia this morning, at least 34 people, including a little girl, are dead after this massive mudslide. The aftermath and what's next for survivors. <laughs> Don't you stop loving me. Where everybody knows your name. She was known best for her role in the hit sitcom Cheers, but she had a career that spanned over four decades. Today, we say goodbye to Kirstie Alley, who lost her battle with cancer at the age of 71. Outside with live cam, it wasn't bad overnight, but in the last couple of hours, the fog has started to move in and the clouds have started to drop. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, December 6th. Happy to be here with you guys. Yeah, glad you're back. in the morning. Welcome. And uh, yes, it is. It's not really cold out there, no. but it's sort of that that dampish cool, you know, with all the humidity and the light little Jackie. You won't need to buy this afternoon. Also, allow yourself some extra time if you are heading out this morning, because you can see now the road appears to be a bit damp over there by 410. We don't have any mist or anything showing up on radar. This is usually too light to show up on radar anyway, but with this fog out there could have a little bit of just that again that that dampness and perhaps some mist. 66 right now is the temperature. Dew point stands at 64, so relative humidity when these two numbers are neck and neck is well up into the 90s right now. No wind to speak of and with that very high humidity, some other factors. That's why we get some of that fog. Still quarter mile visibility out there at the airport. It was 10 miles up until roughly an hour, hour and a half ago. Two and a three quarter at Port SA, just below two miles at Castroville. So the thickest fog is in and around north and western Bear County over in toward Medina County. Some uh, out there in the Hill Country, Rock Springs, Laredo, Eagle Pass. Corpus Christi is not bad as of right now. So it's just a couple of patches that are really, really thick this morning. Temperatures, everybody is in the uh, mid 60s right now, low to mid 60s, even a couple of upper 60s, well above normal by a uh, good 20 degrees or more than that. We should be in the low 40s right, or the mid 40s right now. Mold is on the low side. Update account comes out in about an hour. And as far as the rest of the morning, we are going to continue with uh, seeing some of this fog, seeing these temperatures in the 60s. We will gain roughly 10 to 15 degrees later on today. High temperature in the upper 70s and it's going to get even hotter as we go into the next couple of days. Then temperatures will start to drop a little bit, but still it's not going to feel like December anytime soon. Weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, problems with the fog and mist? Well, we did have a few issues out there, Mike, but I would say that is the best advice is definitely give yourself that extra time. We still have that stalled vehicle along 281, but everywhere else traffic is moving without any trouble there along 
along 90 at Nogalitos. You can see both those east and westbound lanes. Things are really picking up. I feel like it's a lot busier than what we saw yesterday. Now, although we haven't spotted a whole lot of issues out there, we have spotted some of those damp roads as we were talking about a little bit earlier. So we have to be very cautious this morning. Taking you to the map, there are no issues to report, but we will see the slowdowns. US 90, as I mentioned, we saw on that trans guide camera, it is getting busier in those eastbound lanes as you approach 1604, as well as the northwest side and as well as the far northeast side. So things that we will keep an eye on and you can expect to see the slowdowns as the commute does pick up. There's 35 at Weed near where it's a very busy corridor this Tuesday morning. We'll watch things closely, give you those updates right here on GMSA. Mark up. Thank you, Stephen. Right now we want to get back to that late breaking news we've been following this morning. This was the scene just a short time ago at a fire at Cardiff near I-10. That's on the city's east side. This fire started a little after four in the morning. We are still working to get more information, but we can tell you that the home was destroyed. Originally, we were told crews were looking for a 50 year old woman. She has since been found. Two dogs in the backyard were also rescued. Investigators are calling this fire suspicious. We'll bring you more details as they become available. Also new this morning, a food truck robbery leads to a shooting overnight. It happened just after midnight on West Rector Drive outside of a bar on the north side near North Star Mall. San Antonio police say a man dressed in all on all black robbed the victim running from the food truck or running the food, food truck. Excuse me. The victim tried chasing the suspect around the building. However, the suspect then shot the victim. That person was taken to the hospital and their condition is not known at this time. Police say the robber got away with cash. A man is still has been sentenced to 99 years in prison for severely beating and disabling his four month old son. Terrence Hopper Harper was found guilty for beating his four month old son Trace. It happened back in 2018. This is the maximum sentence allowed for the crime. Well, he was last seen Friday night at Canyon Lake. Amir Ali, a 22-year-old college student from the University of Houston, told friends he was going for a walk, but he never made it back to the campsite. Since then, more than 30 of Ali's loved ones made the trip from Houston to help try to find him. So far, only Ali's phone, wallet, and some clothing were found near the water's edge. Right now, canines, boats, and drones are all being used in the search efforts. If you have any information that can help find Amir, asked to call the Comal County Sheriff's Office. That number's on your screen, 830-620-3400. Major League Baseball is showing their support for Uvalde. Take a look at this tweet. The MLB says this year's winter meetings charity auction will benefit the establishment of a new boys and girls club in Uvalde. According to their website, the campaign will be led by the Texas Rangers and Houston Astros. And despite meeting behind closed doors for several hours, no action was taken by the Uvalde CISD school board during that special meeting. That closed door discussion reportedly focused on the board itself and how it operates. The uncle of Rob Elementary victim Jackie Casadas tells Lee Waldman he wants to see one member step down. Trust is one of the most safe things we have. The theme of trust, transparency, and accountability sticking out once again in Monday night's only speaker at the Uvalde CISD School Board special meeting. We gotta look at ourselves and we gotta take a look, a hard look, and see what is the best thing for the community, what is the best thing for the family, what is the best thing for the board, and basically sometimes the best thing to do is see what the community we have and just while Jesse Rizzo didn't call him out by name at the podium, he made it clear later he was referring to school board member J.J. Suarez. He was one of the officers that was in that hallway. He was one of the officers that elected to walk out. Monday, the board met behind closed doors to discuss the board's operating procedures and members' roles and responsibilities with their lawyers. While no action was taken when they reconvened, Rizzo hopes pressure from the community and other board members will lead to Suarez stepping down on his own. The decisions that he's making, the votes that he's casting, it could potentially hurt the school district in the long run, not just with the trust and faith and stuff like that, but I think, I think the school district would be better off the board members asking him to resign. The board president says their discussions will continue on the board's operating procedures. The next time they'll meet is on December 19th for a regular board meeting. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. In today's morning headlines, a desperate search continues for survivors under a mountain of mud. A landslide buried people alive while they were riding a bus in western Colombia. Here's an aerial view of the scene. The death toll stands at 34. One seven-year-old girl was rescued while still holding on to her mother who did not survive. 
Heavy rainfall is being blamed for this tragedy. Over 70 workers are still trying to secure that area, while at least six people were taken to hospitals. In North Texas, loved ones gathered last night to remember the life of seven-year-old Athena Strand. A prayer vigil was held outside the Wise County Courthouse in Decatur. Strand's body was found Friday after she disappeared from her home's driveway earlier in the week. A FedEx driver named Tanner Lynn Horner is accused of kidnapping and killing the girl. He is being held on a $1.5 million bond. Another vigil for Strand is being held tonight at a nearby church. Right now, 638, 65 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. We're talking about the best and worst foods to eat if you have osteoporosis. What you need to know to stay healthy and strong. But first. Don't you stop loving me. Kirstie Alley, an actress whose career spanned 40 years, perhaps best known for her work in Cheers. Where everybody knows your name. Everybody knew her name. Allie joining the show in 1987 and staying through its final season in 93. She won the Best Actress Emmy Award in 91 for playing Rebecca Howe, giving one of the most rowdy speeches in award show history. I only thank God I didn't have to wait as long as Ted. <laughs> Kirstie Alley was born in Wichita, Kansas in 1951. Alley didn't try acting until she was 30. Her first movie role, the 1982 Absolutely. film Star Trek II, Sir, The Wrath of Khan. May I quote General Order 12? Alley would go on to star in films like Drop Dead Gorgeous and TV shows like Veronica's Closet and Fat Actress. The 71-year-old star became known for her blunt approach off the screen, too. In recent years, debating politics online with strangers. But it's her career that will live on. Ali starred in the Look Who's Talking trilogy of films with John Travolta. <laughs> on Monday, her family sharing news of her passing on social media, writing, We are sad to inform you that our incredible, fierce, and loving mother has passed away after a battle with cancer only recently discovered. And John Travolta paying tribute on Instagram, writing, Kirsty was one of the most special relationships I've ever had. I love you, Kirsty. I know we will see each other again. Happening today, a Keysack community event, a town hall about seasonal. Be a tough time with emotional highs and lows. That's why it's so important to know the warning signs of depression. Ursula Perry, Ursula Perry will moderate the event and be joined by mental health care professionals. The town hall begins at 2 p.m. online at ksat.com. About 10 million Americans have osteoporosis. The disease makes bones weak and vulnerable to breaking. That's why a healthy diet is essential for preventing bone breaks if you have osteoporosis. This morning we're talking about what to eat and what to avoid for stronger bones. Osteoporosis is responsible for about 2 million broken bones each year. But your diet could protect you. First, get enough calcium. One cup of milk has about 300 milligrams. That's roughly 30% of your daily goal. Other calcium-rich foods are kale, turnip, greens, figs, almonds, salmon, and cheese. Vitamin D is another important nutrient. It helps your body absorb that calcium. Foods like eggs, pork, milk, fatty fish, and fortified cereal are good sources. Salt is something you'll want to avoid. Studies show postmenopausal women with high salt diets lose more bone minerals. For every 2,300 milligrams of salt you take in, about 40 milligrams of calcium is lost in the urine. Adults should limit their sodium intake to less than 2,300 milligrams per day. That's about one teaspoon of table salt, and experts say if you haven't been focused on your bone health, it's never too late to get started. Some people tell me, you know, I'm 75, I'm 80, I've, I haven't done these things all my life. What, you know, what good is it going to do to start now? And I say, you know, that's, those are the people who have the most to gain. And caffeinated soft drinks, they can also cause problems. That's because caffeine can actually strip the calcium from your bones. Time check, 645. We're going to check in with Steven. 
Stephen, you know, we had some incidents earlier, but I'm not seeing as much fog out there as we did earlier. You know, we're not seeing it on a lot of these tra uh, trans guide cameras, Sarah, but we are seeing a lot of traffic out there. It is a uh, morning rush, so take your time. Uh, we know that some of the areas that we are seeing here on 410 North and North at Ingram, it's picking up in both those uh, lanes, but we also are seeing some of the fog that's still on some of those other trans guide cameras. Not a whole lot of it, just not a very clear picture there at 281 at Bitters. Now, I did mention that we did have a few issues out there. Those have cleared out, and what we are seeing now are just slowdowns, and that's really going to be the problem at this point. We're seeing it in those usual hot spots, as I mentioned, every morning, US 90 over here on the northwest side near Holotus, as well as 1604 uh, near Live Oak if you're traveling in on I-35 southbound. But really, there's no concern out there in terms of incidents that would probably cause these delays to really stretch out a little bit more. But as we get it back there, 410 and Austin Highway, we did have some flashing lights earlier. That crash is cleared in 10 at Days of Vala. Just looks like a busy morning. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, again, case in point. Depends on where you are as mm -hmm. far as any right. fog out there. So this is the picture I was trying to show last half hour, and there's Rudolph with a couple of friends. Okay, are they cute or no? Like, oh, I, I, you I know, know, some people are like, oh, they're so cute, and some are like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Not, but you know what? It's a cute because it's a cute picture, but it's just, I wish those were You don't kitties. like opossums? I like You don't kitties. want to be woken up to some possums outside on your fence? No. <laughs> Did you know they are actually good to have in your backyard? Yeah, they, they eat. eat. They eat ticks and other little things. They cannot get rabies. Because their their body temperature. Well, and a plus for you, they don't eat your cushions of your lawn furniture. No, like unlike squirrels unlike do. squirrels do. So, which I <laughs> yeah, me and squirrels. But anyway, you know, they just want to be on Santa's good list too. So anyway, thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. And uh, it almost looks like this picture has improved ever so slightly. We can see a few more of the lights there over by the airport. Uh, still some fog last count or last uh, measurement. Visibility is down to uh, just a quarter of a mile at the airport. Mile and a quarter Castroville. It has improved at Stinson, Randolph, New Braunfels, and just that one little spot right here on the north and west side of Bear County. A lot down along the Rio Grande and some out there toward Rock Springs. Corpus Christi is not doing too bad as of right now. Temperatures will stay basically steady, maybe fluctuate a degree or two here or there. We've already been down in the low 60s earlier this morning. 71 today at noon. Some leftover fog missed this morning and then some sunshine thrown in later on today, which is going to get us up to 77 degrees. So we will be overall 10 to 15 degrees above normal. There's some of the low clouds that have moved on in here and around the country. Boy, there is uh, there's winter up there to the north of us, but that's not coming anywhere down here because you can see everything's moving straight west to east. This zonal air pattern, which keeps the coldest air up there to the north. Yes, it is brutally cold, 10 below at International Falls and even freezing as far south as Wichita. But there's nothing really to push that down here because these upper level steering winds for us coming in here out of the southwest. There's the uh, the northern branch of the jet, which is kind of confining all of that really, really cold stuff up there just along the US Canadian border. This overall pattern pretty much doesn't change little fluctuations here and there. But for us, our weather does not change really at all through the weekend. Yes, we will be at 80 tomorrow, mid 70s by the weekend, but still we'll have mist drizzle in the morning. Nothing uh, real December like. However, by next week, there is another low and another big trough that's going to be developing out the, there to the west. And indications right now are that this will pull a front through here and at least knock temperatures back down close to normal readings by the middle part of next week. So the forecast today we're starting off at the normal high and we only go up from there 71 at noon most of the cloudy skies high temperature makes it up to 77 plenty of clouds out there some sunshine thrown in and pretty much the same thing tomorrow mist drizzle in the morning but even warmer in the afternoon up to 80 mid 70s then to finish up the week and stay in the mid 70s over the weekend Hopefully something changes by the middle part of next week. So there are, like I said, indications still a week away. Things can change, but there's hope for a little there's more hope. December yeah. temperatures. It was a weird, like, do we turn on the AC to sleep or not? Or it's like one of those when it's the same temperature outside, inside. It is a confusing time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right, trending now on KSAT.com, the San Antonio Public Library is offering tons of holiday events this month. Some of the fun includes cookie decorating, movie nights, and making wrapping paper. We have all those details on our website. You've probably seen the Salvation Army kettles around town. KSAT among the teams competing to raise money for families in need. You could donate by scanning this QR code 
or over on ksat.com. And our Max Massey and Sarah Spivey will be ringing uh, the kettle at 9 o'clock today. They're going to be live during our GMSA at 9. Okay. And that's going to be at the Walmart on the Southeast Military. Southeast Military. Got it. 650, 65 degrees. Gift cards by far are the most popular present during the holiday season. So what can you do if your cards are starting to pile up? That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with Lycan. Like we love it when you start your day with us here on KSAT 12 and GMSA. Live look out at the airport. A few flashing lights, fire truck on its way to a call somewhere. Thank you for your service. Before we go, a busy night for San Antonio fire crews. We just got this video in. One of the places they responded to was downtown at the old Robert E. Lee Apartments on West Travis near Maine and North Flores. Now, crews say a bed was on fire on the sixth floor. Everyone was evacuated from the building and the firefighters got the flames knocked down pretty quickly. Right now, it's not clear what sparked the flames or how much repairs will cost. And cleanup is underway after another fire. This one at a home on the on West South Cross Boulevard, not far from South Zarzamora. Crews say the home was abandoned. No one was hurt. Right now, it's unclear what sparked the flames. KSAT community is in the middle of its Share the Shoes campaign. And actually, we're towards the tail end now. You could donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. This drive in partnership with SAPD and Zapatos. There are several SAPD substations around town taking your donations through next week, December 16th. More information is on the KSAT community page at KSAT.com. We're going to check in with Stephen one more time before you head out the door and hit the road. A lot more traffic out there, and that's expected. We are in that busy hour. We know it as rush hour, but it is not uh, too bad right now in terms of the issues that we are seeing. Just a lot of slowdowns, and you can see right there on the map, uh, you saw all of the TransGuide cameras. It has been a pretty quiet morning. Of course, some of the TransGuide cameras did pick up some of the fog, some damp roads out there. So we mentioned this uh, yesterday. We're going to say it again. Give yourself some caution or extra time this morning to get the days rolling. Good advice. And this picture's actually improved a little bit more out there at the airport. We can actually see the airport off in the distance, unlike just a little bit ago. Now, last report still quarter mile visibility, mile and a quarter Castroville. So we'll still kind of go back and forth with some of this fog this morning. Mid 60s, we are at the normal high right now. We'll make it up to 77 later on today. Some sunshine thrown in. And then tomorrow up to 80. Yeah, this is December, by the way, just a reminder, and mid-70s all the way through the weekend, a couple of showers Saturday, and then again on Monday, hopefully a front middle of next week. The way things are going, we could tear the calendar up now for the year, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah. no sense. Hold out hope. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at GMA at 9.